Um, Mabuhai, hello everyone. We are on Native Pulse, which is a production of Seven Generation Fund for Indigenous Peoples. Uh, the purpose of this conversation series is to bring forth the, the heart, the knowledge, and the action of Indigenous communities to the people. And so our series will feature a variety of leaders and traditional peoples speaking on topics such as uh, sustainable communities, environmental justice, um, and urgent issues as they relate to the health of our, our homelands. Um, it's our intent that these conversations leave you feeling uplifted and inspired by the many, many movements across the Indigenous world. And so to introduce myself, I'm Pangalan Koai Chelsea Metaflor Trilio. My name is Chelsea. I work at Seventh Generation Fund as the program coordinator of Thriving Women, which is a program that supports the, the health, safety, and vitality of Indigenous communities through uplifting Indigenous women leadership. And so today we will be talking with two Indigenous women leaders, um, Cara Flores from Nihi Kids and Ruelin Bayo from Sabokahan, about the impact of militarization in their communities during this pandemic. And so I just wanted to say hello to Cara and Ruelin. Our organization is super thrilled that you can join us for this conversation. I'm personally especially honored to be speaking to fellow Pacific island women um, uplifting topics today that don't normally get uplifted, that are often invisibilized. And so um, I just wanted to express my gratitude. Um, and so before we get into the core of it, if you both could briefly introduce yourself, talk a little bit about your project, um, and let us know who your community is. Kara, if you wanted to, to start. Sure. Um, day, Wahoo Si Kara Flores. Um, my name is Kara Flores. I am an indigenous filmmaker um, and one of the founders of Duk Duk Goose Inc., um, also known as Nihi. We, um, we have Chamorro language classes, and, uh, but the core of our work is focused around producing media. Uh, and the media that we produce it, are goal is to empower or to equip the next generation of protectors. Um, and we do that by affirming identity, celebrating culture, and really uplifting and amplifying Indigenous voices from Guahan and across our region. Um, I'm part, our island of Guahan, also known as Guam, is part of a chain known as the Marianas Islands, and it is the only small group of islands that the Chamorro people call home. Um, we are part of a broader region called Micronesia. Um, our people have been navigating the ocean for thousands of years. Um, yeah. Yeah, that's wonderful. Thank you. Um, so welcome home with Ruralin. Sige, may buntag. Good morning. <laughs> Ako si Rory Lin Bayao, 19 years old. Usa ka manubo nga gikan sa Mindanao, Philippines. Ako ang Sabukahan Youth Coordinator. Ang meaning sa Sabukahan kay Unity of Women. Among ginadepensahan ang yutang kabiling o ginapalambo namo ang among kultura pinaagi sa pag-ila sa among katungod isip mga babae. Okay, so she said, my name is uh, Rory Lin Bayao. I am 19 years old from the Manobo tribe in Mindanao, Philippines. Um, I am the Sabokahan Youth Coordinator. Sabokahan means uh, unity of Lumad women. We defend our ancestral, uh, ancestral land and um, develop our culture by focusing on women's rights. Okay. Ako taga Talaingo, Davao del Norte, parte ni sa Pantaron Mountain Range, nga kung diin ang tao puno sa paghigugma sa kinaiyahan o giyuta. Ang Pantaron Range mao among kinabuhi, tungod kay kinaamong tindahan, hospital, parmasya, o ang among tanan. Um, she said, I am from Talaingo, Davao del Norte, in the Pantaron Mountain Range where the people are filled with love for their environment and land. Pantaron Range is our life because it is our grocery store, 
hospital, pharmacy, our everything. Everything. <laughs> <laughs> Pero ang among yutang kabilin, ginatarget sa mga dagkong lang yung korporasyon. Sa Mina, sama sa um, Compostela Valley Minerals Incorporated, Metal Ores Consolidated, o Felming the Mining Mining Corporation and Development Corporation nga adunay mga mining exploration permit. Um, Boreland is targeted by foreign mining corporations like Compostela Valley Minerals Incorporated, uh, Metal Ores Consolidated, and um, Filming B Mining and Development Corporation, which already have mining exploration permits. <clears throat> O tungod ni ini, gimilitari sa among komunidad, gusto nilang ilugon o kawkawon ang among natural resources o hinailaw nga materyales. Maunang kami nga nagbakwit sa syudad para ipahibalo sa tibuok kalibutan nga ang among katungod sa yuta o kaugalingong paghukom dapat respetoon gyud na nag advocate mi aron makabalik mi sa among mga balay, sa among komunidad. Gusto so this is why our communities are militarized. They want to steal and extract our natural resources. Uh, that's why we evacuated to the city to let the world know that our rights to land and self-determination should be respected. We are advocating so that we can return home to our community. Nya, lima na ako katuig nga sa evacuation center. It has been five years that we have been living in in evacuation. Kung kuan dugang sa among organisasyon ang sabukahan o sa kamanubo world nga nagapasabot og paghiusa o sa kini ka organisasyon sa mga kababayanhan nga nagadepensa sa yutang kabilin nagapalambo sa kultura o pagduso sa among katungod isip mga babae og kay tungod sa among kultura hinahinay nga nagalambo example ni ini mao ang gina ginahawa ang buya o arranged child marriage o duay o dag, nga daghan ng asawa pamaagi sa, sa edukasyon nga gina-encourage na mag-reflect. Okay. To say more about our grassroots organization, Sabukahan means unity in Manobo language. It is an organization of women in defense of ancestral lands who are developing culture and asserting our rights as women. Um, because our culture is slowly changing, for example, we're getting rid of um, buya or arranged, mar arranged child marriage, as well as duai or multi multiple wife system through education that encourages reflection. Maona siya, guys. Ang buya, usa na katrasado nga practice tungod kay ang gihikawan ang usa ka bata sa iyang kaugmaong susama nga maedukar o makaskwela. Sa buya o duay, ang usa ka babay, wala siya choice. Pag nagkasal na sila, ginatratal is isip mga katabang sa ilang mga ban. Um, arranged child marriages are backward practices because the child doesn't have any future like to get an education. Sure. Uh, in, in Buya and Duay, girl or a girl or a woman doesn't have any choice. When they are married, they are just treated like a slave to their husband. Mauna siya. Sa, sa bukahan, nagapahigayin ni o capacity trainings, to sama sa litnong o mga discussion, kabahin sa katungod sa kababainhan, tungod kay ang mga babae aduna sa katungod o kapasidad na magdumala mangulo o mag-participate sa mga decision making na makapamaayo sa komunidad o sa society sa kabuuan kinatibukan uh, In Sabukahan we have capacity trainings like our literacy numeracy program and discussions about women's rights because women have a right and capacity to govern lead and participate in decision making that betters the community and the society as a whole. So that's all. <laughs> Brief introduction. Thank you so much for that introduction. Um, you know, 
you already kind of started talking about this, about the, the military impact and uh, the corporations that have been on Mindanao um, as you've been evacuated for five years. Have you noticed uh, an increase in militarization in response to COVID? And if so, how, how is Saboko Han responding to that increased militarization? Okay, sige. Kuan, kanang isip kanang tubag sa COVID-19, kay ang gobyerno man sa Pilipinas nag-implement og lockdown o kanang enhanced community quarantine sa tibok Pilipinas. Kanya dapat ang mga experts sa medical o public health ang nangulo sa, sa national action plan batok sa COVID. Pero sa karun, mga ex-army general o mga tao sa gobyerno nga na ay military background ang nangulo ni ini. Ang mga pulis, militar, na naa sa mga dalan o highways nga na istrikto nga checkpoints o giingon ni sa presidente nga shoot dead ang kung kinsa man ang maglabag sa palisya sa quarantine. Uh, in, res um, in response to COVID-19, the government of the Philippines is implementing lockdown and enhanced community quarantine all over the Philippines. Um, it should be medical and public health experts leading the national action plan to fight COVID. But instead, it is an ex-army general leading it as well as others with military backgrounds. The police and the military are on the roads and highways, on the streets, with strict checkpoints and have been told by the president to shoot dead anyone who violates the quarantine policies. Duterte. Ang ceasefire with New People's Army o NPA, padayon gihapon ang operasyon sa militar sa among komunidad sa Lumad, sa Kabukiran, para daw sa counter-insurgency. Sukad so, nga gideklara ang ceasefire, adunay duha ka mga pagbomba sa usa ka pagpabuto sa kanyon dito sa Compostela. Kini nga mga atake adunay epekto sa among komunidad sa Lumad ug sa among panimalay ug sa among pagpanguma. So, even though President Duterte declared ceasefire in its civil war with the New People's Army or the NPA, there are ongoing military operations in Lumad communities in the mountains, supposedly for counterinsurgency. Um, since the ceasefire was declared, there have been two aerial bombings and one instance of um, artillery cannons fired in Compostela. So these aerial attacks affected Lumad communities, their homes and farms. Mm -mm. Panahon sa lockdown, aduna yung mga drones nga ginapalupad sa city CSM sa akong itutulog nga iskwilahan. Isip surveillance, kanunay na ay mga intel sa gawa sa among skwilahan. Huwag uban nga nagasulod mismo sa campus, o nagadisguise nga mamaligya o Bible preachers, kanang magwali. Ana, magwali. Ang mga ginikanan sa mga sudyante pa din nga ginahara sa mga sundalo. Then, ginaingnan nga ipa-enroll ang ilang mga anak kami sa public school o dili ni sa sa eskwelahan sa among eskwelahan ang usa ka estudyante gipatawag sa sundalo o interrogate og ipangutana uh, so during during lockdown um, there are still drones flying over our K12 Lumad School CTCSM for surveillance uh, intelligence personnel are always outside of our school and even come on to the camp to the campus disguised as vendors or Bible pictures. Uh, the parents of students are being harassed by soldiers being told to enroll their kids in public school instead. Uh, a student was called by the military for questioning. Mm -mm. Then, ang tubag sa, sa bukahan ni ining militarisasyon, mao ang pagpadayon sa pagpataas sa kahibalo, ani nga isyo, o panawagan sa pagpahunong ni ining. Um, sa bukahan's response to this 
militarization is to continue raising awareness about it and calling for its end. And Kara, if you, you I know that you have involvement in Riyar Gohan um, and other community initiatives. If you can give an overview to our listeners about how military is impacting your community before and uh, during this outbreak. So um, before the outbreak, the the military um, since maybe two thousand nine or two thousand six, there is we were anticipating a military buildup. There's an an announcement. Um, the military was required to um, to produce an environmental impact statement. And so this is something that groups have been organizing around um, since, you know, since 2009. Um, there, the military has been increasing their training range and activities. So now within our region of Micronesia, the military operates in the largest um, training range in the entire world. So. It's, um, I believe, a million, almost a million square nautical miles of land, sea, and um, air. And the majority, I would say, of the community are just not even aware of how large this training area is. So over the past um, five to 10 years, that the military activity and um, kind of space and area that the military is able to operate within has been increasing. And we're right now, or prior to COVID, um, we were, we, we are in the middle of activities um, related to the military buildup, which is the transfer of Marines from Okinawa to Wuhan. Um, that has been something that activists have been, I was part of a group that filed a lawsuit against the US Navy um, and we won and, and they were forced to choose another site and it delayed their activities, but now they are building a fire, the firing range that we filed a lawsuit to stop them from building. Um, they're building it over another area. So that was the kind of the primary issue um, prior to COVID was that the firing range that is being built over the island's main aquifer. And this is the aquifer that provides water to 80% of the island community. Um, they've already bulldozed um, ancient limestone forest or, or jungle areas, which many of these are sacred areas, they're burial grounds um, with artifacts dating back thousands of years. And so um, these areas are not just for us, they're not just kind of historical sites or, or you know, places for research. They're actually places that are in our culture are sacred and that um, our traditional practitioners still return to these places to harvest medicine. Um, so that was the that was the primary focus prior to COVID. There were community groups that were organizing around um, increasing awareness, trying to figure out ways to stop the firing range that is being built. Um, and so that was yeah. There was increased militarization happening prior to COVID. Um, now. There, those activities continue kind of virtually unchecked because groups are um, quarantining or isolated where we are bound to our houses, um, but construction activities continue. They're still considered essential. So um, in addition to the financial challenges that um, that the that COVID kind of has posed to our community. Many people are can't go to work, are not getting paid. There's not um, financial relief, right, for for very many folks. And so 
Um, of course, a lot of activism has also come to a halt um, so that folks can kind of take care of their families and figure out how they're going to provide, right? And, and even if that were not the case, the, the eyes of the world are kind of on the virus. They're not necessarily um, they're not necessarily on the these these what's happening with the military or what whether the military is building what the threat of that is. Um, there's also uh, so the military did bring a new nuclear carrier to Guam and there's been a, an infection there was an infection on that ship and so in addition to all of those challenges Guam is also hosting 5,000 sailors um, and their numbers of infection are growing and so there's concern within the community that um, because we have because our health system is already stressed like prior to COVID Many of us go off island, like we have to go to the Philippines in order to get some of our, some, some of, uh, yeah, medical care here is just not really great. So many people go to the Philippines for surgeries, for treatment. Um, and so it was an already stressed healthcare system. And many people are concerned that of you know the infection transferring over to community members who are already um, at risk. So we have high rates of cancer, diabetes, um, and and minimal access to healthcare. Many people are not insured. Um, so there's that concern. But I think the less visible, what is less visible in this conversation is just the impact that COVID has had on activist groups being able to respond to or to even continue to um, draw attention to the construction, for instance, of the firing range over an aquifer, which, um, which really poses a long-term threat to our community's access to clean water. Um, so yeah, that's that's a summary of, of the military impact prior to and currently. Yeah, thank you for that. Um, I'm just gonna insert here for our listeners. Uh, we are on Native Pulse. We're speaking with Kara Flores and Rulin Bayo on, on the impact of militarization in their communities. Um, and I wanna just go back to Rulin here. I know that you were speaking about you know increased surveillance, um, harassment, targeting of your community and your project leaders. Um, on top of that, that militarization that you're facing, um, you are forced also to respond to COVID uh, at in your evacuation site. And so I'm wondering if you could you know let our listeners know what your project is doing to support um, your peoples during this time as a response to COVID and also in your uh, continuing your effort of what Sabokahan stands for in terms of amplifying women's rights and ancestrologies and, and things like that. Kinabang, <laughs> Ug ayuda sa gobyerno sumala pa ni Mayor Sara Duterte, ni anak ni Duterte digong sa Imir man siya sa syudad dili niya kami hatagan og relief goods ang mga bakwit nga lumad nga nagpuyo din ni sa Haran sa or sa evacuation center kung asa ana ama ang mga miyembro sa mga sabukahan ug ug kami among pamilya Ingon niya, yung ni Sarah Duterte nga, angay mi kaming, angay na mubalik sa among Pinoy Anan. Kung asa among yutang kabilin, diin kami nagdumili. Hangtod nga dili pa muhawa ang mga sundalo sa among komunidad tungod sa kanang hugot na pagpatuman sa quarantine nilipun kauli. Dili, 
dili na makaani ang among mga aliado sa evacuation center ug adu na sad ni Krista nandiya sa pagpagawas aron sa pagpalit sa among pagkaon aron ana ami makaon ana isud sa muntian naglunsad ni og urban gardening sulod sa evacuation center nagtanom mig mga gulay sa mas okra talong batong ug mga pitsay subay so, sa inisyatiba namo sa sabukahan nagtahi usab kami og mga face mask alang sa tanang ana as evacuation center pinaagi sa mga so showing kanang machine <laughs> sewing machine <laughs> nga gidonate sa among aliado para sa among pangkin panginaboy an siya okay even so, uh, <laughs> so, uh, even though we have rights to relief and aid mayor sara duterte of davao city who is um the daughter of the president said that she will not give any relief goods to the Lumad evacuees living here in Haran, um, which includes the members of Sabukahan and their families. She told us that we have to return home to our ancestral lands, which uh, we refuse to until the military leaves our community. Um, because of the strict quarantine, our allies cannot come to the evacuation center. And it is also difficult for us to go outside to buy food. To have food, we are initiating urban gardening in the evacuation, growing vegetables like okra, eggplant, uh, string beans, and pechay. <laughs> Sabukahan has had the initiative to so face masks for the whole evacuation center using the sewing machines <laughs> donated for our livelihood training program. program. Oh, ang ana siya. Alang sa isgutan ng panlawas, naghatag ang sabukhan og pagtuon kabahin sa pagpanglimpyo sa kalawasan ug ang perming pagpatuman sa kalimpyohon sulod sa evacuation center. Ana usab ang pagtuon kabahin sa ginakahitabong pandemic apan gimo kini nga sa matag balay subay sa gipato mag social distancing makalagot <laughs> for health for health sabukahan is giving tutorials on hygiene and sanitation and managing the cleaning routines of the evacuation center center they are they are having educational discussions about the pandemic as well, but house to house to keep their social distancing. Aron mas madasig ang kami katawhang lumad sa evacuation center. Nagapadayon usab ang among pagtuon kabahin sa kasaysayan sa Pilipinas. Ug nagpadayon sa kanang nagpapadayong pakigbisog sa katawhang lumad alang sa among kaugalingong paghukom um, to keep spirits up. We are, we are continuing educational discussions about the history of the Philippines and current struggle of the IPs for indigenous self-determination. Alang ka na mo, Manggod, ang mga paningkamot sa sabukahan na gatumong aron mamahimong himsog ang among panglawas o sakto among kaalam samtang tataw ang kawalay pagtagad sa guberno o buot minining ib ibilin sa kagutom hangtod mamatay. Apan kami, nagpakita sa among kaligon, diha sa pagbarog, sa among kaugalingon, ilabi na kami mga kababain hang lumad, tungod ining patriarka nga katilingban. Maulaw mi nga mutingog. Apan karun, tungod sa lumad school, kung nga sa akong nagskwela, o sa bukahan, inyong makita Mm -hmm. Kaming mga kababain niyang nagalantaw sa kaayuan sa among katawhan, di sa hisgutan ng panlawas, o kami ang magsiguro nga makakaon among mga pamilya. Sa karun, wala na may gipahimuslan. Sa karun, kami na ang mga namuno o aduna na nami kaalam, kada kadaugan alang sa tribo kung ang tanang kababainhan, gawas nun, makagampan sa iyang katungod sa iyang tinuod nga kuan di ay tinuod nga kakayahan for us for us 
mm-hmm. all of these all of these efforts of sabokahan to keep our to keep our communities healthy and educated while the government is clearly leaving us to starve and die show our resiliency especially as lumad women um because of patriarchy we used to be too ashamed to speak up but now because of lumad schools and sabukahan look, look at us yay <laughs> look at us Um, we women have always taken care of our people's health and we have always been the ones to make sure the family eats. But now, we are not exploited. But now, we are leaders and we are educated. The whole tribe benefits when women and girls can live to their full capacity. Thank you so much. It seems like there's so many uh, creative and innovative and inspiring strategies that, that Sabokahan has been able to engage in and uh, while still uplifting your, your messages and your purpose. Um, I really appreciate you sharing all of that. Uh, Kara, is, is there anything uh, that you'd like to speak on in terms of how your community or project is responding specifically to, to the impact of COVID? I know that you mentioned a little bit about like the economic impact and things like that um, but if you had any stories about how your community is responding our community is really relying on nonprofits to um, to feed people right and to make sure that people have food um, there are some farming initiatives that I know that for our organization, we're compiling a list of those resources because uh, it's not really well known um, where you can go if you're hungry or if you're, you run out of food and you don't have money to buy food. Um, so we're compiling a list of those resources to share with our audience. Um, and I know that we're joining together with the Center for Island Sustainability to, um, I'm not sure if we're gonna be, I'm not sure if it's for planting uh, or to get folks like a baby chick that will eventually give them eggs. So in that way to kind of help people start to become sustainable in some small way Um, And then the other thing that we're working on with the Guam Department of Education is getting them, they actually requested all of our media resources since uh, all kids are home now. Um, And so that's been an opportunity with the Department of Education. We created a manual with links um, and kind of showing teachers where the media could line up with their with their standards and how they could use the media. So we've just gotten that over to them. And then next week, we're actually launching live content um, for you know parents whose kids are home with them and maybe they're still trying to work. Um, we're going to be doing uh, some programming, both in our native language of Shamoro and also in English. Um, some sing-alongs, storytelling, um, you know, so some healing stuff so that uh, this, it's a hard time for folks. So in that way, if we're able to help with the kids, but also give people um, kind of a little space within their day where they can just spend some time that is not Um, stressful and hopefully is healing for them. That's something that we're starting next week. Do you have a a call to action that you'd like to highlight at this time or anything you'd like to say to our listeners to support um, any of the F we've talked about today? Uh, You know, I feel like the immediate needs for many communities of food and um, medical help, and I don't know if that's something that that uh, that maybe you could that seventh gen has compiled I've been wondering okay where do we encourage people to donate right now because we'd love you know we'd love 
for donations to come in around building indigenous content, but I feel like there are so many, so many indigenous communities where um, lives are at stake, uh, whether it's due to um, access to food or clean water or healthcare or education around the virus that um, that's really what we're encouraging people to do is to donate to those communities and and um, and if there I wish that there was a list right where we could say okay these communities are have really been hit hard and this is how you can help them um, you can go to to nihiguam.org to learn more about and that's n-i-h-i-g-u-a-m.org to learn more about our organization and if you wanted to make a donation but uh, I think even on our website we were kind of trying to find places that we could direct people to donate to um, that address some of the immediate needs that our communities are facing right now. Thank you and we'll make sure to put your website on on the video so people are able to see that as well. Um, and Ruralyn, did you at Tsuokohan have any call to action or anything you'd like to highlight at this time? Uh, Apan isip sa mga kababayanhang lumad, dili na bago alang kanamo kining katalagman ug kalisod bisan kining militarisasyon. Kining nasinating pandemic, tipik lang sa among kinatibok ang pakibisog alang sa among katungod diha sa yuta, panginabuhian ug kaugalingong paghukom. Translate. Translate. Okay. Uh, in regards to the pandemic, we call for free mass testing and not militarization. But as Lumad women, calamity and crisis are not new to us. Neither is militarization. Mm -hmm. This pandemic is just a small part of our overall struggle for our rights to land, livelihood, and self-determination. Then, ang among panawagan mao ang pagpahunong sa langyang dinagkong pagmina diya sa pantarong nilabi na ang pagtukod sa mga mega dam sa among our call is for foreign large-scale mining of Pantaron to be stopped, as well as the building of mega dams on Pulangi River. Ugwan po, ang pagpahunong sa militarisasyon na tunhay aron protektahan pagsulod sa mina diha sa among yutang kabilin, pagpahunong sa Department of Agriculture diha sa paghimo og mga plantasyon sa agribusiness, suportahan ang local sustainable food system, alang sa tanang komunidad sa tibuok Pilipinas, ibalik ang yuta ang adto sa nagtikad. Um, stop the militarization of our ancestral lands which exist to protect mining ventures. Stop the Department of Agriculture from converting our ancestral lands into farms for agribusiness. Then, Support, support local local sustainable food systems for all communities across the Philippines and return the land to the people who till it. Then, yeah, okay. <laughs> then, um, to please follow Sabu Kahan on social media. We have Instagram at Sabu Kahan and a Facebook Sabu Kahan IP Women. And also, to please follow our community partner and advocacy network, the Young Net Advocacy Network, the Young Network, who are uh, leading the fundraising for the communities here in Mindanao. Yay! <laughs> Thank you both. Did you have any final words that you'd like to offer, Kara Ruralin? Sa tanan mga kababainhan nga na asa Guam or the wala pa ko kada dito po tanin niyo. Dasig lang ta kanunay. Then 
di ta magpakawyang sa akin nga COVID na palagi tay paglaong. Ang atong yung hugot nga depensahan, ang atong kuan, atong kinaiyahan, atong environment, atong gigikanan, ug di nato kalimtan atong kultura na. Then magtinabangay tang tanan para sa kagawa, para saan? Para sa pagdepensa sa atong mga tagsa-tagsa ka gigikanan nga yutang kabilin. <laughs> um, so she said to all to all the IPs, to all the people around the world and especially to all the our friends there in Guam to especially now in times of COVID let us not let us not lose hope and to stay strong and to keep going because uh, for us to continue our uh, defense of our land of our environment and to keep our um, advocacy and our work in yeah in defending in defending our communities and our our the future generation yes 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 that's it thank you thank you Kara, did you have any thoughts you'd like to say um i just wanted to thank you for giving us the opportunity to have this conversation and um to our friends in Sapakahan for sharing, uh, I know a little bit, right? But it's always, um, we travel to the Philippines so often and not often do we go to Mindanao. So it's just nice to hear directly from folks who are there, um, what's going on. Um, I know there's a lot of solidarity already within the groups that we work between um, but it's always nice to see people, even if it's just um, through a Zoom call and to hear what's going on over there. So I really appreciate being able to listen to that, to their report on what's going on right now. Um, and yeah, I think for those who are listening now more than ever is the time to really look at indigenous communities who are um, who are fighting to protect land and water and um, to support, even if it's not specifically those fights, I think like to support the wellness of the people within those communities is so important because um, that's how the fight continues, right? Or that's how we're able to move forward as if we're we're taking care of the people who are on the front lines and so to find ways to make sure even that people just have food um, is so important at this time and um, yeah so I, I just appreciate the opportunity and I appreciate um, the folks who are working all across the world um, and also those who are supporting that work. Thank you so much to you both and to the translator at Sabokohan for being a part of this conversation uh, to share your stories with us. For those of you listening, we thank you for tuning in to Native Pulse today. To learn more, visit us at www.7genfund.org. Until next time, thanks for stopping by. Thank you.